The following is paid for by Advanced Physical Medicine of Miami. The information presented in this program is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any condition, illness, or disease. The depiction of successful results from the treatments discussed in this presentation are examples of the possible benefits and do not guarantee results. The decision to start any medical treatment should be made only after discussing all benefits and risks with a health care provider. Welcome to Healthy Dose with Dr. Joe. Are you ready to repair damage to your body? Replace what is depleting to regain your youthful vitality? Regenerate what is now degenerating? Dr. Joseph Gambardella is a doctor of chiropractic medicine and an anti-aging health practitioner diplomat. He was the first doctor in Miami to complete his fellowship training in stem cell therapies. As the owner of Advanced Physical Medicine and Rehab of Miami, He provides patients with the most sophisticated and safest treatments in the market today. Join Dr. Joe for the next half hour and learn about the medical advancements that have helped thousands avoid surgery and pain meds. From stem cells to hormones and everything in between. Get ready to feel empowered. Get ready to regain control and reclaim your life. Now, here's your healthy dose with Dr. Joe. Welcome to Healthy Dose Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Joe Gambardella with Advanced Physical Medicine and Rehab of Miami. You can find out more about us by visiting our website, apmrmiami.com, and by calling 305-598-8788. I'm back today with Dr. Buzz Korth and Rob Sapero, our office manager. How are you doing, gentlemen? Doing good. Hey, what's going on, Joe? Everything's good, Buzz. You know, we, we uh, spoke a little bit about injuries and inflammation last time and we just started to get into how the body utilizes oxygen and how we were able to get oxygen into unhealthy joints to begin the reparatory process in other words to get the body back on track healing by itself Uh, there are a few things that we need to discuss further which is the majority of our patients that come to see us are really beyond that when it in terms of chronic degenerative disease meaning that they have inflammation they have pain but they also have moderate to severe degeneration And oftentimes what we tell patients when they say, well, you know, am I a candidate for ozone therapy or do I need these tissue grafts that contain the stem cells? The first thing that we want to tell patients is at least do something. If you do the ozone and you put it into your body, you're going to take your body as far as it can go. If you have enough stem cells, if they're strong enough, your condition is going to improve significantly. But if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the ozone didn't work. It just means that your stem cells aren't strong enough. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that. Your thoughts are. Yeah, I agree 100%. You know, uh, and the first thing I want to kind of throw in there, too, is just because you you went to a different type of provider or a non-regenerative medicine practitioner, and, and to be clear, what a regenerative medicine practitioner, what Dr. Joe does in Miami, what we do in Ohio, is we're, we're regenerative medicine specialists, and, and it's just a different way of looking at the body. When you see a regenerative medicine doctor, we don't look at you and say, what's the best pain medication to give you or what's going to be the best joint replacement or best narcotic mass that you have going on. We look at you as an individual, and, and our goal is how can I get Joe to heal himself? Because the body is a healing organism, you know, and we're repairing and regenerating every single day, but you have situations and joints and other areas that don't heal. How do we jumpstart those areas to heal like the rest of your body? That's how we look at things, and it, which is a total different mindset. So, and unless you see another regenerative medicine practitioner, you, if you went and saw a normal practitioner or a they don't look at things the way we do. If you see an orthopedist for knee patient and decide, do we do the partial or the full knee replacement? Do we give you the cortisone injection so we don't have to do surgery for another year? Like It's just a different way of looking at things. So just because someone told you you're not a candidate, that doesn't necessarily mean the case. So and regenerative medicine only works if you go see a provider to see if it works. And not everyone qualifies either, Joe. I think you can test this, no. There is a, a pop that's uh, uh, some of the people who come to our office, and we just let them know, hey, listen, unfortunately, you're not a great candidate for this. You know, and, and we, uh, we're we not going to waste your time or money. If, if you're a candidate, we'll let you know. And if not, we'll, we'll let you know, too. And that's why patients that are out there listening to the show right now, if you have neck pain, if you have lower back pain, if you have knee pain, these things that we're talking about only work if you call. You have to find out if you're a candidate. And if you are, we're going to be able to help you. And if you can't, we're, we're going to let you know that, too. We have so many colleagues. You know, We treat doctors as patients, and we have colleagues that are doctors and, and different types of specialists that could work with you if we can. But at least find out if you're a candidate because you can replace a knee, you could replace a shoulder, but you can't replace a spine. And all of these 
implanted devices. You know, the statistics are out there, Buzz, when people say, you know, I'm 50 years old, I'm just going to replace my knee and I'll be good. The research is out there where these mechanical implants are going to last 10 to 12 years. Now, what that means is it doesn't mean that the device is going to fall apart when you're walking down the street, but but the relief in ideal circumstances that these replaced joints can provide is at best 10 to 12 years, at best. Yeah, and, and I think we talked about it in the last show too. There's always risk involved with surgery. You know, uh, one in 400 people that has a total knee replacement dies. And that, and that, you know, so think about that. If we said what if, uh Every 400 uh, car trip you on, there's going to be a severe crash. Would you drive in a car or, or one of 400 airplanes crash? Would you ever fly? And, you know, the answer is hell no. So, so there's always risk. And you know this firsthand. I think we talked about that on the last show too, Joe. You, I mean, one of the advantages of being a doctor is when we need medical help, help we go to the other, we, we know the good doctors. Mm-hmm. And Joe, you, Joe injured your pec, and it was a situation where you weren't a candidate for stem cells. It was a complete rupture of your pectoral muscle, and you, you know, you needed surgery. So, so once again, we're not claiming surgery. There are situations when you need surgery; they're just overdone. So you wait, and you saw the best surgery, surgery in Miami at the best hospital in Miami, and your outcome on that was you almost died. And it wasn't the surgeon's fault; it wasn't the hospital's fault because you went to the best, and you're a healthy individual. But there, there's risks involved. So you know that's why you know if you're listening to the show, hey, okay, well, should I, you know would, would this work out for me? I don't know, you know what's the process to get to your office, but, but go see Dr. Joe in his office and, and get evaluated. And Joe's going to let you know, hey, you're a good candidate or you're not a good candidate. But yeah, you have nothing to lose. At least you can take the information to decide, do I want to do surgery for and that's the last 10 or 12 years or, or potentially just regenerative medicine procedure that could last a lifetime? You know, when people ask how long do these procedures last, they last as long as you last because it's your tissue. You're getting the body to heal itself. You know, when you get a cut, how long does the cut stay healed? Well, unless you recut it, right? Yeah. And it's the same thing with these joints. Excellent point, Buzz. And so let's get into the heart of this now. And these patients that come to see us, some of them have diagnostic tests, some of them don't. I know when you lecture all around Ohio, you encourage people, come to the office, you have all the diagnostic testing on site where you're able to digitally x-ray and evaluate these patients in multiple positions as we do here. Uh, and then we do a physical exam on these patients to find out Are they taking drugs that are stopping their stem cells from working? Uh, Do they have nutritional deficiencies or hormonal deficiencies that are limiting their body's ability to heal? And once we get those ironed out, we do some blood work, take the diagnostics, then we can approach the patient as an individual and find out if they're a candidate. And what we explain to them is your body's inflammation is a signal that your body is incapable of healing. If, If you were capable of healing, the inflammation would have gone away. So if you have degeneration, this pain has been around for months, your cells are signaling your stem cells for help. And depending on where the yeah, injury that's, is. That's, para, that's paracrine signaling. You know? So, so and inflammation, if you're listening, so inflammation is pain. So if you're wondering, hey, do I have inflammation? Well, if you have pain somewhere, you have inflammation. And, and that's necessary to heal because when you feel the pain and you have the inflammation at the cellular level, you have this thing called paracrine signaling occurring. And that paracrine signal at the cellular level is attracting your body's own stem cells to the area to propagate healing. That's the healing process. And in ideal circumstances, when you have enough circulation and enough stem cells and they're strong enough, you're going to completely heal. So let's talk about the patients that aren't healing. They have limitations in terms of their ability to perform activities of daily living, going up and down stairs, sitting in a chair, sleeping comfortably throughout the night. So they have three primary problems. Number one, it's the poor circulation to the joints and tendons and ligaments. We have fewer stem cells with aging, and then the stem cells that we do have can't release enough growth factors because they're weaker or they have insufficient amounts. So let's tackle all of those things one at a time and why our system works so well is because, number one, we we fix, so to speak, the inability of a body to utilize oxygen in these unhealthy joints by putting ozone in. We spoke about that last time on our last podcast. But now we want to talk about getting these tissue grafts into the body that contain these stem cells to get your body operating at a surplus instead of a deficiency, getting enough cells into the body so that your body can begin the healing process. Buzz, there's a couple of different types of stem cells that patients ask me about all the time. They say, should I use my own stem cells, you know, which are found in bone marrow and in body fat, some circulating in the blood, some in the pulp of your teeth. I mean, they're all over the body because as you mentioned earlier, you need stem cells to live. Uh, And then you have donor stem cells, stem cells that come from umbilical cord tissue. 
Which are the best mm-hmm. ones, in your opinion, to use for orthopedic type conditions? Yeah, so if you look at the research, what the research tells us, Joe, is the mesenchymal stem cell or the tissue stem cell is the stem cell that clearly works best for orthopedic type conditions. And the best source of mesenchymal stem cells is umbilical cord tissue. Now, I want to be clear, that's not umbilical cord blood, that's umbilical cord tissue. And umbilical cord tissue, uh, this tissue is harvested from females that have full-term C-section births. And uh, there's more and more C-section births happening in the United States every year, so there's an excess of this tissue. Uh, and basically the way this works, if a female is going to have a C-section, they plan these out. They'll say, hey, uh, Joe, you're going to have a baby next Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Would you like to donate the umbilical cord for medical use? If the female consents, then she's pre-screened. You know, obviously, you know, somebody, you know, multiple sex partners, tattooed in the past six months, left the country in the past year, or disqualifiers. But if they pass that pre-screening process at a tissue bank, when the baby's born, they draw the, the blood from the female, the tester for all known bacteria and viruses. And then they also test the C-section and billow cord for all known bacteria and viruses, including CMV. And if the tissue in the mother passes this process, which is regulated by not only the FDA, but the American Association of Tissue Banks, that's the exact tissue that you're using in your facility. So it's not like from aborted babies or anything like that. This is basically discarded of tissue anyways. But we know that 25 to 35% of the stem cells in that umbilical cord tissue are of the mesenchymal type, which are the best for tissue healing. And I know, you know it is- Whereas comparison, people will talk about bone marrow because bone marrow is another place you can get stem cells. And you hear a lot about bone marrow. But bone marrow is mostly hematopoietic or epithelial, which are blood stem cells. So, you know, so, so bone marrow is great. If you have leukemia, then you would, you would want bone marrow. You want, you know, it's a blood disease, you want a blood stem cell. But using bone marrow to, to heal a, a, a tissue injury makes no clinic, there's no clinical rationale. I think, you know, the statistics I heard, uh, in a newborn baby, one in every 10,000 of the stem cells in bone marrow is a mesenchymal stem cell. But as we age, that decreases. And if you get to a 40-year-old male, it's one in every 250,000. And as you go down the line, so, so you're getting 99% more mesenchymal stem cells in umbilical cord tissue than you would from a bone marrow harvest. So it's not even in the same league. So the absolute best cells to use for orthopedics without dispute are the tissue grafts that contain the mesenchymal stem cells. Yeah, and this is that, and it's very important to note though, this there's other stuff in this umbilical cord. So this is not stem cell therapy. We use allograft to contain stem cells, but we want the other stuff in that umbilical cord. There's also over three thousand different growth factors. There's scaffolding proteins, there's cytokines, there's exosomes, there there's all of this all of this stuff. There's long chain hyaluronic acid. So basically, the way I like to tell patients is, is you have a, you're, you're de- and when you have a degenerated joint, whether it's your knee or your back, what's happening, to keep it real simple, is your cells are dying in that joint quicker than they're being reproduced. The, the joint is literally dying. That's what degeneration is. You have a dying joint. When we are able to put these allografts in there, it's like putting the highest quality topsoil down that attracts your own stem cells to the area and, and starts the healing cascade. And literally, your body reverses that degenerative process. And I've seen it time and time and time again. You know what else? You know what else, Buzz? These tissue stem cells from the umbilical cord, they've never, ever been exposed to a trauma. They've never been exposed to cell phone radiation. They've never been exposed to blood pressure medication. They've never been exposed to any harsh toxins, antibiotics. So the growth factors that these stem cells release are the most potent, strongest available known to man. And so when you go- yeah, and there's no people ask too, is there any risk of rejection? Well, this is not a blood product. There's no HLA antibody, so there, 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 there's never been uh, an umbilical cord tissue rejected. So just because it's not a blood product, so it's completely safe. I think the date has been over five hundred thousand procedures using umbilical cord tissue. There's never been even one noted side effect. So you can't even debate the safety of these tissues at this point. Okay. Yeah, in, in fact, there's a term we use for it. There, it's called immune privilege. Where, if, if you think about this logically, if a mother has carries a baby full term, and it's possible that the baby could be a completely different blood type than the mother, and in which case, if the tissue that surrounds the baby and the umbilical cord had markers on the surface, every single 
baby would be miscarried. So it's pretty amazing right. that the way God God engineered this whole thing that the tissue that surrounds the baby is considered immune privilege. Antigens and surface markers don't even show up on the surface of that tissue for the body to reject. So they can be used, as you mentioned. They're not blood type products at all. Or though, although I will mention, I've had patients come into the office and, and talk about umbilical cord blood, completely different product from what we use. Maybe, Buzz, you can touch on that for just a brief minute, and then we're going to go to break. Yeah, unfortunately, one of the... Uh biggest providers of tissues in the country, or I don't want to mention a name of the company that was using umbilical cord blood. Now, just so you know, umbilical cord blood is the lab that we use. We use a lab called Regenerative Labs out of uh, Pensacola, Florida. I bid the lab. I, you know, I know you have to go and visit it to see where our, the tissue comes from our patients. Uh, they, they actually dispose of the blood because it's of no, of no use. It's the raw stem cell type. There's HLA antibodies. It's, it's a dangerous product. There's a company out there that's actually peddling this garbage. And a lot of providers, even in Columbus and in Miami, were, were injecting this, this blood product into patients and, and having a lot of adverse reactions on a product that wouldn't work to heal anything anyway. So there was no clinical rationale. And that's kind of, you know, one thing that people have to understand this in the show is any medical provider can use allografts. But the, but, the, but the downside of that is that, that means they have to have no education. You know, Dr. Joe, I know you, you went through the fellowship program, which is the only stem cell fellowship available in the United States on, on, on the use of stem cells and allografts. You, you know, that was a program you completed that was co-sponsored by George Washington University. I don't know of anyone else. I, there's no one else in Ohio that has it. I don't know if there's anyone else in Miami that has that designation. But if you're considering doing these procedures, go to someone who's had some type of formal education because... The people that were peddling these blood products had no education. Probably a, a rep came into the office and said, hey, there's a lot of stem cells. Use it. And these physicians who had no education were administering a, uh, it, 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 administering a product that was inferior, dangerous, but they had no education on it. So I, if you were to go have heart surgery, you'd want to go to someone who is fellowship training in heart surgery. Why wouldn't you do the same thing if you're going to have some type of stem cell I wrap for any of your joints? You go see the best. And we're going to find out about how this all comes together and how it can help you with your knee pain and lower back pain right after this. Repair your body. Replace your key hormone levels. Allow your body to regenerate itself without surgery or meds. When it comes to your health, the best plan is preventative. If you wait for symptoms to show, you could be too late. With over 40 years combined clinical experience all under one conveniently located state-of-the-art facility, Dr. Joe is on the leading edge of regenerative and physical medicine. Take control of your health and get a free consultation and evaluation. Visit us at AP PMRMiami.com or call 305-598-8788, 305-598-8788. And we're back with Dr. Buzz talking about regenerative medicine and how the body is able to heal itself. Dr. Buzz, we were just following up with the different types of products available on the market. Um, we talked about the biologic allografts that contain these mesenchymal stem cells that come from umbilical cord tissue in the lab that we use up in Pensacola, Florida, regenerative labs. And... When all things go well with a patient, when they've been screened and we find out that they, that they are a candidate, let's just walk the patient through the process of how they're going to recover their health. Number one is we get some ozone into the joint, get the body to basically open the floodgate, floodgates, allow their own stem cells into the injured area. They begin to release growth factors, and then we inject the biologic allograft that contains the stem cells into the joint in combination with two other therapies that I briefly want to touch touch on. Number one is class four medical lasers and low-level laser therapy and shockwave therapy. Just really briefly, the reason that these are so important in, in terms of our overall process, Dr. Buzz, you know, we have nearly identical practices, um, you up in Ohio. What we no do... No difference, the doctors are better looking up here. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about this, Buzz... You know, these biologic allografts are so important in the process, but they're only 25% of what we do. Did you ever think about that? Yeah, yeah that's a great that's a great point. I, I, I want to hammer that. Joke. I, don't, I don't know if people who are listening really pick up on that. If we could just inject an allograft that contains stem cells into your knee and fix it, you wouldn't need us in the first place because your own stem cells would have done the job. So so if you're not going to prep the joint using, you know, shockwave or, or late, you know, shockwave therapy, laser therapy, in the ozone injections, you might as well inject the allograft onto a desktop. Because if you don't have oxygen in these joints, it doesn't matter what stem cells, whether it's your own stem cells or stem cells another physician put into there, they're not going to do their job and you're not going to get a result. And I can't tell you how many times, you know, we've been doing this 
for about what, four years now, Joe. So, you know, we literally see thousands of patients. I, I can't say if that's people come to my facility and say, man, well, I did stem cells at the other doc's office and it didn't work out. And you'll find out, number one, it wasn't even stem cells. They're using amniotic membrane or PRP, which, which are, are not stem cell products or, you know, whatever. That's, that's another show. But they're not doing anything to prep the joint. They're not doing ozone. They're not doing class 4 laser. They're not doing, like, if you don't get oxygen to that joint, it's not going to work out. And you're wasting your money. That, that's why, you know, and, and that's something we, Joe, we learned that by going through our fellowship program and treating thousands, you know, almost 10,000 cases now. This is, and this is something that, that, that is mandatory. I won't put stem cells or allographic skin based stem cells in someone's joint if we don't use ozone with it. I just won't do it because you're not going to get a result. And, you know, patients ask, well, how long is it going to last? And we tell them it's going to last as long as you last, provided you do these specific things. And, you know, we mentioned lasers. Why are lasers so important? Well, these class four medical lasers, what they do is they stimulate your blood vessel walls to release nitric oxide. And nitric oxide causes blood vessels to dilate. The bigger the blood vessels, the more oxygen you're going to push into an unhealthy joint. If you push enough oxygen into an unhealthy joint, over time, it's going to become a healthy joint. We also utilize shockwave therapy. Shockwave therapy is a device used in hospital settings to break up kidney stones. For orthopedics, we use it inside uh, your over arthritic joints to break up scar tissue, but for the same thing, to attract your own stem cells into the damaged area, to open up blood vessels that are clogged, and to create the branching of brand new blood vessels to help feed the unhealthy joint. So if you are a patient in chronic pain, knee pain, lower back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, you're going to want to look for a specific thing. Dr. Buzz, how do people find out about you in, in, in Ohio? They're in the Midwest. You know, they're somewhere by St. Louis, by Kentucky, uh, out in Missouri. They, they, they need some help. How do they come and find you? It's pretty easy. Uh, we have people that fly in every single week from different states at this point. Uh, and I think you do too, though. So uh, the, the kind of the cool thing is the word is getting out there. Uh, you know, you can either, uh, our website is, is just Buckeye, uh, PMR.com. That's, uh, B-U-C-K-E-Y-E-P-M-R.com. Um, uh, I even give my cell phone out. People can call me if they want to. 614-562-9110. 614-562-9110. I work seven days a week. I know you do too, Joe. We're crazy, right? But, uh, yeah. um, yeah. You get a hold of me either way to check it out. He said at this point, between both of us, we have about 10,000 cases. We've created amazing results. Uh, if you're listening to the show, I'll tell you this. If you're listening to the show and you've had pain for longer than three months somewhere, you're suffering with degeneration. And it will never get better if you don't do something about it. So you have nothing to lose with contacting either Dr. Joe or myself and seeing if you're a candidate for these procedures. And then we're not going to waste your time or money. If we can help you, we'll let you know. And if we can't, we'll, we'll let you know too. And, you know, th- it doesn't end here, Buzz. I know uh, you and I were discussing, you know, what could we do to make this even better? Ma- you know, we, we practice uh, a philosophy I know both of us do, which, which is exchange and abundance, where, you know, we feel like in the marketplace we are probably priced below what we should be. But, you know, we make this affordable for everyone, and we over-deliver. We over-deliver by making sure that, you know, we can give the patients the absolute best chance of recovery that's out there, but we're still looking for ways to make it better. I know we just signed up to uh, get another fellowship under under our belts in in metabolic medicine and anti aging, and that's going to really open up the floodgates in terms of how do we look at different types of blood panels and and different types of nutritional factors to make this process go even better. I know just to touch on briefly that there are some eating patterns that allow stem cells to work even better. We'll just really briefly touch on that, which is intermittent fasting and fasting mimicking diets. Buzz, you know, one of the things we learned about was that when you can control insulin resistance, uh, you can activate stem cells within the body to work even better than they normally do. And fasting mimicking is, you know, caloric deprivation where you're eating between five and 800 calories a day for a period of three to five days juggling that with intermittent fasting which is fasting um you know between 16 hours a day and eating for eight hours and even fasting once a week for 24 hours and and once a month for 72 consecutive hours when medically cleared can make these procedures go far better than they would if you were eating a diet with high sugar and high fat yeah and i know another thing that you're using in your practice we are is 
you know, the, the, the importance of biogenic hormones and the, the, some of the peptides we're using are, are, are really getting you know, amazing results. And, you know, another thing people have to understand here is a question I get often asked is, is you know, am I too old? Well, we're using, with the use of biogenic hormones and donated tissue, the age doesn't matter. We've had several patients in their 90s that have done amazing. So you're never too old to try regenerative medicine because of the tissues and the procedures we're doing. So once again, Buzz, how do people find out about you? Uh, you can go right to our website, which is BuckeyePMR.com. That's BuckeyePMR.com. All right, and this is Dr. Joe. Join me every Wednesday night at 6 and Sunday mornings at 9.30 to learn more about stem cells, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, and physical medicine. Visit our website at apmrmiami.com or call 305-598-8788. Remember, repair, replace, and regenerate. I'm your host, Dr. Joe, and I'll see you next time.